It seems we hear stories like this more and more. Will a judge even let it go to a jury? Yeah. Sought out potential victims online while posing as a female nurse. There are over 7,000 suicide-related websites available online. While some are there to offer support for those having suicidal thoughts, there are other malicious sites that encourage the act of suicide. This story is about a Canadian teenager and college freshman who suffered from depression and suicidal thoughts. She looked to the online chat rooms for support, but what she found was fatal. In this week's episode of Caught, presented by Catfish, we're going to be taking a look into the tragic story of Nadia Kajoji and the Suicide Pack chat room. In 2007, 18-year-old Nadia Kajoji had just graduated high school and was beginning her studies at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. Her goal was to obtain a degree in politics and then transfer into a law school. Nadia's future was looking bright, and many of her friends attested at the fact that she was very smart talented and easygoing. She was a really very strong person, but she was very in-depth, very, very smart. Like I always kind of knew that she would do something great in her life. Nadia's brother stated in an interview, Nadia was always striving to be better. As soon as she accomplishes what she was set out to do, she raises the bar. Nadia's bubbly personality soon changed, however, once her college studies became more and more difficult. To add to the stress, her pregnancy with her new boyfriend had unfortunately resulted in a miscarriage. I shouldn't say it was an inkling that something was changing. I just knew she was going, it, it was a hard time for her. I didn't choose to get pregnant. The condom broke. I took the morning after pill, but it failed. So I was pregnant and had no choice in the matter. Uh, then I miscarried. So I couldn't choose whether to keep the child or not keep the child, go through with the pregnancy, not go through with it. These factors pushed Nadia into a severe case of depression. She would go to see the school psychiatrist for support and even kept a video journal. As time went on, it became more and more clear that the depression started to consume her life. If she asks, have you been thinking about suicide? I'd say yes, I am depressed. I have postpartum mood disorder, clinical depression, and, insom and insomnia. Sure, you yourself have thought about suicide? Yes, I've thought about suicide. What a shocker. Um, maybe I wouldn't. I'm thinking about it if I could sleep and be happy. I don't know if I can stay in school. I can't even go to class. I'm gonna lose this semester. And it seems like it would be easy, you know, just start going to class and doing your work. But I can't. I can't function. Not knowing exactly what was going on, Carlton Security had contacted Nadia's mother to see if she was home because she had not been at school. With everyone now realizing she had gone missing, they immediately started the hunt to find Nadia. Her brother stated, Was I foolish for going around and, you know, searching here and trying to search there and going through parks knee high in snow? Seeing... It, it kept hope. It kept a bit of, you know, bit of sanity, I guess, in the situation. Only after she went missing, Nadia's family started learning about what was going on in school. Her regular visits to the school psychiatrist, the antidepressants she was prescribed to, and the suicidal thoughts she suffered from, all of which was a complete shock and surprise to them. I just wish I could find my daughter. And every day, every hour goes by, my hopes go. Lower and lower and lower. Her parents and investigators then searched through her laptop and discovered that she had been a member of different suicidal websites and chat rooms. The sites featured members instructing others on how to take their own life and give some form of negative encouragement to those who are struggling. While going through her messages, one of the names stuck out. A nurse by the name of Cami D from Minnesota had been talking with Nadia, encouraging her to hang herself. Cami D supposedly was a middle-aged woman that struggled with her own mental health issues. Investigators found it weird that as soon as they started chatting, Cami suggested that the two of them make a suicidal pact to make it easier on them. Cami started encouraging Nadia to hang herself in front of the webcam so that way she could watch and make sure Nadia is doing everything correctly. After she committed the act, she would then hang herself right after. The chats became more and more disturbing as Cami continued to suggest that Nadia hang herself in front of a webcam. But all in all, 
Nadia refused. On March 9th, 2008, six weeks after she had went missing, Nadia's body was found downstream after jumping off of a bridge above Rideau River. Investigators dug even deeper into the identity of Cami D to help uncover the mystery around Nadia's suicide. They decided to scan her IP address and found that it was linked to the home of a William Melcher Dinkle, a 47-year-old licensed nurse and merry father of two teenage girls. At this same address, they also found the usernames Lee Dow and Falcon Girl, which were also accounts trying to convince people to commit suicide. When the Ottawa investigators reached out for help, nobody wanted to take on the case. What I can tell you is ultimately we didn't get the result that we wanted in that we weren't able to identify who was in fact in conversation with Nadia. Now this is a conversation taking place on a computer Online. identified by that IP address, that Correct. internet protocol address. Correct at that house in Faribault, Minnesota. Exactly, so it doesn't provide us the information of who, who is actually at the keyboard, how many persons might be at that residence, etc. Well, except we know how many people are at that address. It's Mr. Melchert Dinkle, his wife and two teenage daughters. And certainly we received information about the family composition there. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, to the threshold that the courts require that identification to be made, we were not successful in obtaining that. Finally, an internet task force in Minnesota reached out willing to help, but it took a lot of time to crack the case. Almost five months after the internet task force took on the case, another chat room member came forward and stated that Cami D is still trying to convince those to commit suicide. Also uncovered was an incident that occurred in 2005. 32-year-old British man Mark Drybro was also a victim of William Dinkle. Like Nadia, William encouraged Mark to hang himself, and unfortunately, he did. When police finally confronted William Dinkle, he was surprisingly very cooperative and confessed to lying about his identity online and convincing over seven other people to commit suicide. When asked why, William responded with, it's the thrill of the chase. In 2011, almost three years after Nadia's passing, William was finally indicted and convicted for assisting in the suicide of Mark Drybro and the attempted assisted suicide of Nadia. Shockingly, he only served 178 days in prison. And so concludes the tragic story of Nadia Kajoji. Give us a like if you enjoyed this video and let us know in the comments if you think William should have served more time in jail. For more in-depth details on this case, please feel free to check out our blog linked in the description. For teasers on new episodes, be sure to follow us on our other social media pages. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when the next episode of Caught, presented by Catfish, goes live.